Today, my goal is to give you a good idea of exactly what Slack is, how it fits in your life, and why you should consider using a tool like Slack, if not Slack itself. So we are going to dive into Slack today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? And we've got a daunting task ahead of us. I want in today's video to give you a really good solid idea of exactly what Slack is and where it fits in your life. Now to do so means that this video is a little bit longer than our normal video. So what we've done is we've actually broken the topics down into almost chapter headings, which you see listed here. If you only want clarification on one aspect of Slack or you want to go jump around within the video, you can use the time code navigation that we have here or if you look in the description below we'll have all of the different time codes so you can just click on them to navigate directly to the section you are most interested in as i say i'm trying to give you a really complete idea of what slack is so let us now dive into it slack is a communication and collaboration tool and as far as i'm concerned it has one overriding purpose it has one purpose in life and that is to replace email for internal communications. That's it. If, if you can use Slack and within your team, you stop using your email inbox to collaborate and to coordinate with your team members, but instead start using Slack to co collaborate and coordinate with your team members, you are a winner. That is the essence of what Slack does. Now it will do much more than that, but that is effectively the most important purpose of Slack. And it's kind of a noble, a kind of a noble cause. If you stop and think about it, because our email inbox is one of the greatest wastes of time that we have, certainly for internal communication. I mean, we all know how much time we spend opening and closing emails, returning to the same email, being copied on emails that we're not interested in, all from internal team members. Now, email is still important. It's still crucial for external communication. But for internal communication, there has to be a better way. In fact, we often MacGyver our own ways to communicate internally. Uh, so we start using uh, text messaging with our teammates in order to communicate. Or we start using Facebook Messenger or some other messaging tool in order to streamline our communications. But if we do that and we're not organized, we end up actually becoming even less productive because then you start having the confusion of, now, did I send that information to you in an email or did I send it as a text message? Or maybe I sent it to you in Facebook Messenger. Ah, where did I? We have that sort of situation happening. If you set your entire team to using Slack for all internal communications, it will take a little bit of time for everybody to get on the same page. But once you are, it will undoubtedly streamline your communication, save you time, and make you more efficient. It is as simple as that. That, in its essence, is what Slack is. So how does Slack accomplish this? Well, Slack accomplishes it through the use of an interface, which is very similar to a chat interface. If you're comfortable with Microsoft Messenger or text messaging, you will be comfortable with Slack. There are some additional bells and whistles that allow you to have kind of project-based threads of conversations, but effectively you are in a simple chat window. It looks just like other chat windows. You've got a messaging area down below, you have the address or you have a, a roster of the different people who you're communicating with. Some of them are group messages, some of them are individual messages, but it's all done through this very quick entry text-based area. And it works as well on desktop as it does in mobile, and there's also a web-based client. Now within this area, we also have the ability to be able to add attachments, to be able to share documents, to be able to invoke different processes, such as just quickly jump on a video conferencing call, all within it. But they actually call this area a workspace, and it is. This is where your project lives, this is where your team lives, and this is the workspace that you all live within in a virtual environment. That's the essence of what Slack is. Okay, let's get you started installing Slack. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about where Slack lives because Slack has, I guess you've got three different places that you will end up accessing your Slack account. Slack is a cloud-based service, meaning all of the information gets shared back and forth through web services in the cloud. Now you have three different apps, I guess we could call them apps, three different apps that you can use to have conversations in Slack and to manage your Slack installation. 
The first is you can do it within a web browser. Here is my Slack account open in a web browser. So that's something that you can access from any computer that has web access. And in the web version, you also do a lot of your account management. You can do a lot of things as far as setting up your account. But there's also a desktop app that you can install, which has a dish. It, it's slicker, it's cleaner, it's faster. Uh, and then you can install that in Macintosh or Windows. Most of the time we spend in the desktop app, which will allow us to have multiple workspaces open at the same time that you were going to want to download, which we'll show you about in just a moment. Then there's also a mobile app for Slack. Let me show you that. That's on your smartphone or on your tablet. So you can also download a mobile version in each one of these tools, each one of these apps accesses the same conversations at the same time all through the cloud interface. So regardless of which one in, which one you're using, you are in your Slack account when you are using it. Now, how do you go about getting it in the first place? Well, I'm not going to walk you through the entire installation process because that's just kind of repeating something that the folks at Slack have already done a great job of. I'm going to have a link down below in the description to this web page here, which tells you how to download your Slack app, install it on your devices and get started. So once you've done that, you can come back and we'll start talking about the Slack interface. Before we go on, humor me for a moment. If you want to learn the fastest and most efficient way to use Slack, both as a user and as an administrator, let me tell you about the Slack Academy, a project that I'm working on with my good buddy, Brooks Duncan, who is a far better teacher of all things Slack than I can ever be. Well, we're collaborating and producing a course called the Slack Academy. Now, there's a free version and a paid version. The free version will give you a great tutorial, far more detail than I can go into in this video on how to use Slack. The paid version is for those of you who want to make sure that Slack is installed efficiently in your company and all of the users and the administrators are on the same page. So I encourage you to visit the slackacademy.com and take a look. Let me take you now on a little bit of a tour of the Slack interface. Now we're looking at the desktop app on the Mac, but it's pretty similar on all different platforms. The, the actual workspace is broken down into a couple of different areas. First of all, we have the workplace switcher here. This allows us to jump back and forth between different teams that we might be working in. If you're a freelancer or a subcontractor, you might have several different companies you work with. You might have several different teams within your organization that you work with. And each one of those can be identified here. Now I've got my main Dotto Tech channel, which is my team, my, 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 the team of that works with me every day. We are all here. As well, I've got this one for Slack Made Easy. This is an old course that we created before we started on the Slack Academy. And this is a channel that we created for that. And it's got hundreds of people from all over the world who were learning about using Slack within that workspace. And then I've got several other channels that are for projects that I'm working on with external companies. Next to the workspace switcher are our different channels. Each workspace you have might have different channels. And the way you can look at the channels is they are projects that you're working on. So related conversations on an individual project are all going to be clustered into the different channels. And you can make as many or as few channels as you want, uh, but you create them here. So this is where related conversations happen. And then beneath that, you have your direct messages, which is where most of us use Slack most often. This is a direct one-on-one -on -one conversation or small group conversation with two or three or four or five people where you've got a group of people that you're having a conversation with and it appears, uh, all of the conversations appear in their feed. And then we have the actual conversation feed here, which looks very similar to any other instant messaging app you have. And you can incorporate all sorts of assets, videos and images and documents can all be incorporated here. And all you do to communicate is you just go in and you type away and uh, your conversations happen back and forth. Now, before we leave the interface, I'm going to show you in the drop down menu here, this is where you can go in and you can update your profile and you can also do some basic management and administration of your Slack channel. That happens within the drop down menu here. And you also do a lot of those functions on the website in your account at the website as well. But that's the interface of Slack. Let's take a moment and talk about the search functions within Slack, which really set it apart and are another one of the keys to the benefits of Slack. Slack archives all of your conversations and gives you instant access to any historical conversations you have 
through search. Now, this is so powerful. Think about it. If you need to find a reference to a conversation that's buried in a series of emails, finding that and doing a search on it could take a lot of time. In Slack, because Slack archives all of your messages. Now, that is if you have the paid plan. Slack archives all of your messages. And if you're on the free plan, it archives several months' worth of messages. And it gives you instant access through search. And the search is very robust and very powerful. So if I just want to look for our mentions of the Slack Academy, our project, I type that in. And all the times that it's mentioned in our conversations, it's brought forward here. Think about how powerful that is. How many times has somebody sent you a URL or sent you some information and you've gone, oh, where is that information and how do I find it? The search in Slack will become something that you use over and over again and will end up saving you an inordinate amount of time. Search in Slack is one of the secret superpowers that Slack brings to the table. Let's take a quick look at the chat interface within Slack, because this is where you'll actually spend most of your time. Now you can select either channels, which you have conversations in, which you basically broadcast your message to everybody in the channel, or you can have specific conversations down here in the direct message area. And I've actually started a conversation with Liz, and I'm just going to continue on that conversation. So it's just like other messaging apps. You just type into the chat box below and you hit enter and it sends off the information in the conversation and goes back and forth. Now I asked Liz, this is, I'm actually recording this demo on a Saturday. So I'm, <laughs> I'm asking for a lot from a team member. Uh, but Liz, I, I poked in at her and I said, Hey Liz, do you have time for a quick conversation? I'm doing a demo. And you can see the little thread that we're having the conversation on here. The reason I asked right here is, are you on your desktop or in mobile is because I don't see see a presence indicator here. I don't see a little light telling me that Liz is online. If she was on her desktop, I would see that she's there. And this is really an important factor if you are working with team members, knowing who's online, knowing who's not, knowing has do, who has a do not disturb sign on them or who's snoozed all notifications so they aren't getting notifications. Using Slack instead of using email means that there is an additional opportunity for instant communication to happen back and forth with a team member, kind of going back and forth really quickly. But you have to know whether the person's available or not, or your nose might get out of joint if somebody doesn't reply to you right away. So letting people know exactly what is happening in your life and what your availability is at any one time is important. And I see here, Liz is actually, oh, she just sent me. She's having dinner, piri piri chicken with potatoes. I'm in Vancouver, Liz is in London, so there, it is dinner time for London as I'm recording this. So Slack brings us all of the instant gratification of instant messaging with additional context, knowing when a person's available, where they're available, what their status is, so that you can more effectively manage your expectations as well as manage your conversations. I think one of the things that I got most excited about when I first looked at Slack was the integration with other apps. Slack sits kind of at the heart of an entire productivity system, and it has dozens of integrations where other apps will interface with Slack to create some really wonderful work processes. Let me give you an example, and then I'll show you how you can discover your own. Here is just one of our regular chat windows that's going, this is between my team and I, and if I wanted to start a Zoom call with my team, I just hit the slash key, and then type in Zoom. And you see when I type in the slash, there's all these commands and these shortcuts that as you become a power user of Slack, you can uh, of Slack, you can access. But you don't have to be too much of a power user to remember Zoom. You hit type in Zoom, hit enter, and it launches a Zoom meeting and sends an invite to everybody in your list automatically that easily. We use this probably six times a day where we're chatting away and I say, oh, I better just talk to you about this. I hit slash Zoom, hit the button, boom, we jump into a call and we have the call happen right there within Slack. And there are other ways that you can video conference. Actually, Slack has its own video conferencing built in, but this is how we do it in Zoom. So what other integrations are there? Oh my, oh my, sit back and enjoy this. In order to find out what integrations are in Zoom, you go into your account management area in your web browser, and there, if you scroll down, you'll find your applications area. Here's the apps that we have installed, but you can add more applications to Slack through this interface. And there are, I don't know how many there are, but there are so many. 
In fact, with the free version of Slack, you can install 10 integrations. With the paid version, it's an unlimited number of integrations. Now, you can lose a lot of time looking at the different apps that are integrated with Slack, but I kind of looked at it when I first went through it, and even now, as I'm going through it with you now, I look at it as kind of a treasure hunt. I find a different app, and I go, oh, what a cool idea. That's such a neat way to use Slack to manage that process. So under their staff picks, you find the featured ones, and you'll find the, the list of ones that you think are going to be there. Asana. We love Asana for project management. Great pick. Obviously, Zoom. So popular. I've already showed you how Zoom works in this environment. Google Calendar. And it goes on and on with a variety of other tools. But if you look down here at the categories, that gives you some deeper understanding of how the app integrations can work within Slack. Uh, let's take a look at file management because file management is one area for sure that Slack has to be really strong because think about our work on collaborative documents. If we're collaborating in conversation and communication, then the documents that we're collaborating on, it'd be great if it interfaced with the entire system. And indeed, you find Box, Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox, all available. But scrolling through, you find some other tools that make you go, oh, what frame I owe. You probably don't know what Frame.io is, but it's an, a video editing application that allows you to share files back and forth and edits back and forth with an editor through the video interface. We also see Adobe's Creative Cloud there. So for creatives, it can work for us. Hello Sign. If you need documents being signed and you need to manage that process, having the conversation layer integrate with the actual document layer, that is very powerful. This is the sort of integration that we find within Slack. I won't spend any more time in here because I could spend a whole bunch of time just pointing at things and going, oh, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. But I think you get the idea. The app integration with Slack is one of the real powerful aspects of this as a tool. Let me show you a little bit about the app in mobile. Now I have my iPhone here. And if I go into the Slack app on the iPhone, I can go into any of the conversations that I have and chat. And this is very similar to an instant messaging app right on your smartphone. You can see I have access to the conversation Liz and I just had, and I can go in and I can chat back and forth. You have pretty much the exact same control as you would have on the desktop. And if you look at the very top here, you've got the three lines, kind of the hamburger menu. That'll bring us back and allow us to navigate more broadly within the channels, within the different channels that we have built into Slack. So it's a very, a lot of people live on the mobile version of Slack and it's similar on the iPad. You've got great functionality in mobile. It's a very comfortable interface. And with this style of conversation, it just works tremendously well in the mobile environment. I want to return to one other aspect of using Slack before we wrap things up. And when I was showing you the little chat that I was having with Liz, I talked a little bit about the fact that I could tell if Liz was online or not and what the status was of Liz as we were having the conversation. This is something which is really important. So I wanted to return to it for a moment to just kind of make sure that you recognize how valuable this is. When you're working with a remote team, uh, knowing who's available to you and who you have access to is important as you work your way through different issues in the day. And so respecting both other people's time and your team members' time as well and their expectations is a really important part of using Slack. The fact that you're sitting there working away on a, on a challenge and that you have access through Slack to your team members instantly and you can fire off a message and you pretty much know they're going to see that message will create expectations and can create some stress. But here's the key to managing that. If you just click here on your account settings, you have the ability to change your status at any point. You can pause notifications coming to you and tell people, look, I'm not going to get any notifications until tomorrow. Then your team knows that you are, have not registered this, you're not gonna acknowledge it, so you aren't gonna be able to help them until tomorrow. So setting reasonable expectations is tremendously important when you have a tool that reaches out in as intimately as Slack does and reaches right to where a person's working when they're working. You can actually have some fun with this too. I just wanna show you this. You can set all of these little bit more fun aspects of setting your status as well. You can let people know if you're sick, if you're commuting. You can use this one. I'm in a meeting for an hour. So just recognize I'm in a meeting for an hour and then everybody out there who is on who is on my team will see if they go to message me, it's gonna have that little calendar icon and it's gonna say Steve's in a meeting. He'll be available in an hour. So they know. 
Setting expectations, I think, is one of the keys to using Slack efficiently. There's a lot to Slack. Don't be intimidated by how long this video is and how we were able to just superficially skim over the surface of Slack. One of the beauties of using Slack is it's a tool that you can use super efficiently just for simple conversations at the beginning. And over time, as you get more experience, you, can, you will start to use the deeper and deeper integrated tools and applications. It's a tool that you can grow with. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to understand everything. When you start using Slack, you can begin using it very efficiently right at the beginning and you will grow with the tool. I promise you that. Now, I hope that you found this video today to be useful. We hope to produce more videos on Slack, so I need some help from you. I need you to tell me in comments what you need to know more about yourself in the world of Slack, and I'll be happy to try and create videos to support that objective. And finally, I have two favors to ask of you. First, if you found this video to be useful, please give us a thumbs up and let YouTube know that it's a good video as well. And while you're at it, you might consider sharing it with somebody who will benefit from it. Secondly, if you're not yet subscribed to our channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and I will see you next time right here on Dotto Tech. Till then, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. <laughs>